Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one, you huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. On your mark, get set. <laughs> Fellas and girls, running foot races or playing baseball or any sport calls for a hearty breakfast. Tomorrow, make yours a breakfast of delicious Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice with milk or cream and fruit. Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice furnish extra health benefits of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more... These ready-to-serve king-size kernels of premium wheat rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're shot through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. They're delicious. Yes, try them. You'll say, here's the breakfast we like to eat. Quaker Puff Rice? Or Quaker Puff Wheat. great dog king struggled free from the snowbank in which he had burrowed close to his sleeping master. The scent of danger was in the air. A moment later, he saw the wolf pack streaking across the ridge. Their howls woke the other. Sergeant Preston woke with them. Wolves, king? Yes, hungry, too. Still a little fire. I'll build it up. The sergeant pulled himself out of his sleeping bag and piled more wood on the fire. But the wolf pack heading down the slope never swerved. They came straight on toward the camp. They must be starving when a fire of this size won't stop them. Left to fight to save the team, King. The sergeant checked his guns and walked forward to the edge of the circle of light. King walked beside him, his muscles tense to meet the attack. There was only one thought in his mind. He must protect his master against howling menace. There were over 20 wolves in the pack. Their eyes flashed green and their fangs white as they raced on toward the sergeant and King. Closer and closer. At last, the sergeant opened fire. The pack swerved aside, but only slightly, trying to avoid the man and get at the dogs behind him. Then King dashed forward to intercept him. He threw himself at the leader and knocked him off his feet. The leader's fangs slashed his shoulder open. The pain was sharp, searing, but King never wavered in his attack. As the sergeant fired point blank into the pack, he fought to subdue his savage opponent. The wolf was a giant, even larger than King, and stronger than any animal the dog had ever met before. King went down before a charge from the wolf, and the wolf fangs went close to his jugular. It took a supreme effort to wrench himself free. Desperately, he grabbed for a hold. He found it, and now nothing but death could break it, his own or the wolf's. It was the sergeant who ended the fight. There was a shot, and the body of the wolf went limp. When King staggered to his feet, the wolf pack was racing back toward the ridge. The sergeant knelt beside the dog. King, King, old fellow, you put up a wonderful fight, but you've been hurt badly. Now let me see, boy. Shoulder, throat. King, that was a close one. I'll have to take care of you right away. King didn't mind the sting of the antiseptic on his wounds. The quiet voice of his master and the gentle touch of his hands made up for everything. He made no objection when the sergeant wrapped him in a blanket and placed him on the sled. But when morning came and it was time to hit the trail, he tried to get up and take his place at the head of the team. Oh, boy, no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to ride today. You don't have to tell the fella. Wouldn't matter how badly you were hurt, you'd still want to work. But I don't want to lose the best dog in the Yukon, King. You'll have to take it easy for a few days. Okay? King licked the sergeant's mitten. Good old boy. All right, hun, hun! 
During that day's travel, the sergeant left the open country behind and at nightfall had reached the edge of the black forest. He had a letter to deliver to a trapper named George Mason, who shared a cabin with his partner, Marty Westlake, and the latter's little daughter, Anne. It began to snow heavily. Miles ahead, a man muffled in a caribou parka watched the Mason cabin from the edge of the clearing in which it stood. In his arms, he carried several bear traps. Where's the best place to set them? Yeah, they fish through the ice a lot. I, I put them along the bank into the creek. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> the man circled the clearing until he had reached the creek. Then he followed it upstream and Lily was directly in front of the cabin. The snow was, was falling so thickly that the outlines of the building were hidden. And even the light streaming from the window was tempered to a murky glow. The man set his traps. <laughs> There's no need to hide them. The snow will do that for me. Yes, it's almost covered now. And the snow will cover my tracks, too. <laughs> they won't be able to tell. <laughs> and sooner or later, they'll step up into one. Then they'll find it out. Then they'll know what it means to steal from Louis Lacey. <laughs> the sergeant's team followed the creek to Mason's cabin. Ah! Ah, your husband! But the sergeant drove them up the bank as soon as the clearing was reached. The lights of the cabin could be seen. They raced down to the cabin door on a diagonal and so missed the line of traps on the bank. But the sergeant called out the work of order for the hall. Whoa! Holly! Holly! End of the trail, King. Let's stay here for a second, my boy. I'll be right back to one harness the team, and I'll, I'll carry you inside. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Hello, George. Come on in. You're a welcome visitor. You'll think so when you see what I have for you. Here. A letter. Good. good. Hello. Marty, this is Sergeant Preston. I don't think, think you've ever met. How do you do? A letter from my sister, Marty. Really? You don't mind if I read it, Sergeant? Not at all. Go ahead. You'll spend the night with us, won't you? Why, uh, I was hoping I'd be invited. You're welcome. You, you can tie your uh, dogs half the bag. I don't know that. to be tied. Oh, well, uh... Marty, it's all all right. Sis will be happy to take care of Anne for as, as long as you want. The less fun than yours, and yet... Uh, you don't have to tell me you'll be, be sorry to lose her. Uh, Anne? Marty's a little girl. She's asleep in the next room. Oh. She's only six, but it's the time she was studying the school. Say, hey, Sergeant, maybe you can help us out while you're here. Trouble? We may have trouble. Maybe you can prevent it. Our nearest neighbor is Louis Lacey. He lives about a mile north of here, deep up in the forest. He was over here last, last night and accused us of raiding his traps. Might be a good idea to take a look at them. Well, it wouldn't be a good idea to have Louie catch at it. Huh? Something's come over the man. Wasn't he talking wild last night, Marty? He sure was. He woke him up. He frightened her badly. I had to threaten to beat him up before he'd leave. Well, I might as well take a run over there while I still have the team harnessed. Oh, you won't be able to drive. The trail's too narrow for a sled. In that case, I'll unharness the dogs right now and feed them. Yes, Sergeant, we, we don't have any dogs, so we don't have a run. Would you mind tying them up? Why? As a favor to me. Well, they're perfectly gentle. They won't mind it too much, will they? Well, I don't suppose so, if you insist. I'm afraid Marty doesn't like dogs, Sergeant. I see. Well, uh, my lead dog's been badly hurt. King's been hurt? Wolfpack attacked us last night, and he fought the leader. I was going to ask if I could bring him in here tonight. Oh, that's impossible. In the same house with Anne? The shoulder's been bandaged. He'll lie on a blanket and he won't even move. King's the finest dog in the world, Marty. I can't stand for it. You know why, George. Whatever you feel about dogs doesn't apply to King. Sergeant, I don't want you to think I'm unreasonable. But the summer Anne was three years old, we were living in Dawson. She toddled out of the house one day and there was a dog running down the street. He wasn't mad, but he was savage. Anne would start to stop him. To pet him. Yet he turned on her. I was coming around the corner of the cabin when I saw it. Well, I, I was in time, thank goodness. But Anne still has a little scar on her neck. We thought she was going to die. Can you blame me for the way I feel? No. Except 
But you might change your mind about dogs a little if you ever got to know King. I can't stand any dog around. There's a shed out in back, Sergeant. We can make him comfortable there. All right, that'll be fine. And so King was bedded down in the shed back of the cabin that night. That suits you, King? One more day of rest, you'll be able to move around all you want to. Good night, boy. The sergeant fed the team and tied them up. Then, with George Mason acting as his guide, he started through the forest toward Louis Lacey's cabin. It was still snowing hard, but there was very little wind. The two men had traveled about half a mile when Mason stopped. Here, Sergeant. Louis usually has a line of traps running to the west from that big pine ahead of us. George? Yeah? I know who's been raiding his traps. Huh? Look at these tracks. A wolverine made them. You're right. And he didn't make them long ago. Snow hasn't covered them. Come on, we may catch him red-handed. The two men ran along the trail to the big pine. There he is, by the first trap. Hold it. Where is that something in the trap? There's something in the trap, and the wolverine's killed it. He's eating. Are you going to try a shot? I can't get any closer. He's downwind from us. He can hear us. I'll have to shoot from here. Okay. I think you got him. Come on, we'll see. You did. You drilled him clean. Yes. You know, it's strange, George. What is? How long has Lacey been trapping? Ten years that I know of. This wolverine must have left tracks before tonight. Why didn't Lacey see them and recognize them? Search me. I told you when he accused us last night, he sounded like he was out of his head. Perhaps he is. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to showing him this wolverine. I'll teach you to rob my trap. Down, George. I'll throw you into kingdom come. We'll continue our story in just a moment. I am thinking of something. Can you tell me what it is? Gee, it looks like we're going to play that swell game again. Boy, and all of us can play it, too. Right, kids. Remember, you just ask me questions. I'll answer right or wrong. And you see how quick you can guess just what it is I'm thinking of. Ready? Okay. Let's see. Is it something famous? Right you are, Billy. Gosh, it wouldn't be Quaker Pup Wheat or Quaker Pup Rice. We had that before. And it wouldn't be the gun that shoots them either. Nope. Well, does it have anything to do with Quaker Pup Wheat or Quaker Pup Rice? Yep, very much so. Boy, this is tough. Well, here's a tip. What's your favorite color? Mine's red. Mine's blue. Hmm, red and blue. Does that remind you of anything? Sure, the red and blue Quaker package. Well, that's close, Sandra. Actually, what I'm thinking of in particular is something else right on the front of every package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Oh, now, Billy, don't look so discouraged. Cheer up. Smile. Huh? Gee, I got it. It's a smiling Quaker man on the package. Right, kids. I was thinking of the smiling Quaker man on the front of every package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And when you fellas and girls want the swellest tasting breakfast ever, think of delicious, ready to serve wheat or rice shot from guns. And when you want the original Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, there's only one way to get these crisp, tender, king size kernels exploded up to eight times normal size. Ask for crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Yes, always remember to buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from gun. Now to continue our story. Just before the shotgun blasted the silence of the forest, George and the sergeant dropped to the ground behind a tree. Afterwards, there was no sound. You think he's gone? I haven't heard anything. This is why I miss King. He doesn't depend on his eyes the way we do. He'd be able to tell us if Lacey was still around. That was Lacey's voice, wasn't it? Yeah. Now he's turned into a killer. Listen. Somebody running. Right. Is this cabin straight ahead? The clearing's nearly half a mile. You better not take the trail. He might be waiting for us somewhere farther on. Probably. Follow me, George, from one tree to another. Don't show yourself any more than you have to. Just keep me headed in the right direction. All right, come on, let's go. I'm with you, Sergeant. 
The two men rose to their feet and started through the forest. The sergeant picked up the tracks of the man who had shot at them and followed them, cautiously, sprinting from the cover of one pine to the next, until finally he could see an open space in the woods ahead. Is this the clearing we're coming to? Yeah. Slow, then. There's the cabin. He's inside, waiting for us. I wonder. Or around and back. What's that in front of the cabin door? I don't know. Could be a caribou he shot? No, it isn't a caribou. It's a man wearing a caribou parka. Well, Louis wears one. It's Louis, Sergeant. Come on. The two men ran the few remaining yards into the clearing and onto the cabin. The trapper, Louis Lacey, was lying face down in a snowdrift just outside his door. The sergeant knelt in the snow and turned him over. What's wrong with him? I don't know. I can't hear his heart. Well, neither of us shot. No. Can't you hear it yet? Is he dead? Not yet, but he soon will be, unless we do something about it. Get the door open, George. Carry him inside. We've got to work fast. Sergeant Preston carried the unconscious trapper into the cabin, undressed him, and put him to bed as George Mason lit a fire in the stove. How is he? His pulse is stronger. Any idea what's wrong? He's a sick man, George. wonder if he was sick when he showed up at our place last night. Could have been. He has a fever. Well, looks like he's sleeping now. Doesn't seem to be anything more we can do for him right now. Stay here, that's all. We can't let him throw the blankets off. The sergeant and George sat beside the trapper's cot all through the night. At daybreak, the man's breathing became labored. What do you think, sergeant? I think it's pneumonia. Where's the nervous doctor? Beaver City, 20 miles. Of course, there's Marty, but he won't help. Marty? What do you mean there's Marty? He's a doctor. At least he was until he came up to the Yukon three years ago. He gave it up when his wife died back in the States. He says he killed her. What are you talking about? Oh, I don't mean murdered her, but she was sick, and he was taking care of her, and she died. Oh. After that, he refused to treat another patient. He took Ann and came up here. Well, they can't refuse to help at a time like this. He knows more than you or I do. He can at least... He won't, Sergeant. He's a funny guy. Say. What? He's still got his doctor's bag stored away. There might be some pills or stuff in it. You go get him. Bring him back here quick with his bag. Oh, you'd better go at it. That's the way to do it all. What's Louis saying? He's delirious. That's the way to catch a trap robber. Bear traps. That'll teach him. Yeah, it don't make sense. I wonder. That'll teach him. The first time they get down the creek, and they never see them. The snow's covering them all up. My tracks, too. It's so hard to walk. I never make it. They rob my traps. Let's see how they like walking in the bear traps. I'll show them. Bear traps? Yes. I'll show them. Bear traps? Could he have meant what he said? It sounds like he set bear traps along the creek over at our place. I'm afraid he may then have. We've got yes, to get... but I'll do it, George. I can make it back there faster than you can. I'll help you with your part. All right, thanks. He must have been ill when he got the idea you dropped his traps. His revenge is part of his delirium. Watch him, George. Keep him well covered. I will. I'll see you later. I'll bring Marty back with me. Marty, who had fallen asleep in a chair by the stove, waiting for the return of George and the sergeant, was wakened by the sunlight streaming through the window. He started to his feet, concern written in his face. He slipped into his parka, picked up his rifle, and left the cabin. It was the slamming of the door that woke little Ann. Daddy? Daddy? When there was no response to her call, she slipped out of bed and dressed herself. A few minutes later, her parka buttoned tight against the cold, she stepped out of the cabin. Daddy? Uncle George? Where are you? Maybe they're out in the shed fixing traps. The little girl ran around the cabin to the shed. She didn't see the sergeant's team who had been tied behind the shed and had burrowed deep in the snow. But when she opened the door, she saw King. A dog! Daddy bought a doggie! Oh, you're beautiful. You're the most beautiful doggie in the whole wide world. Oh, but your ear coat just like silver. Pain shot through yeah. King's shoulders. The little girl patted him. But he recognized the affection in her voice and made no effort to move away. <laughs> then the little girl grasped his harness and pulled him to his feet. Come on. Come on out and play. We'll go down to the creek, doggy. Now brush away the snow and, and you can pull me along the ice. Come on. Come on, boy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Here, boy. 
King allowed himself to be led from the shed, and he walked quietly beside the little girl as she started trudging toward the creek. But his shoulder was terribly sore, and each step was filled with pain. He found it difficult to keep pace with the little girl. Come on. See if you can catch me. The little girl started to run. A savage king. A combination of man smell and steel and grease. The sergeant had taught him all about traps, and King knew that there was one buried in the snow directly ahead of the child. He ran after her and took her parka in his teeth, pulling her to a stop. Oh, no. That isn't fair. You can't do that. Come on, let's go. Anne pulled away and started to run toward the creek once more. King ran after her, and this time as he caught up with her, he jumped against her. She lost her balance and fell into a snowdrift. At just that moment, Marty walked into the clearing. He only saw King jump and Anne fall. King was standing over the little girl, determined to keep her away from the trap. To Marty, it seemed that he was menacing her. Without any hesitation, he raised his rifle to his shoulder, sighted, and shot. A wave of blinding pain swept through King, and then a strange blackness blotted out the light from his eyes. He dropped to the ground. Oh, doggy! Oh, doggy, you've been hit! Daddy, why did you do it? Why did you kill the dog? Ann, are you all right? Did he hurt you? No. We were only playing. Why did you shoot him? I saw him jump at you. He only pushed me a little. It was a game we were playing. Oh, look at him. Look at what you've done. He's dead. I'll see. <laughs> the sergeant had run hard all the way from Lacey's cabin. He reached the clearing as Marty knelt beside King's still body. He saw King, Marty, and Anne and sprinted to join them. King! King! What's the matter with him? I shot him. In heaven's name, man, why? I saw him jump against Dan. I thought he was attacking you. It, it was only a game. We were running down to the creek and he just pushed against me a little. You were running toward the creek? Uh-huh. Give me your rifle, Marty. What for? I'll show you. I'll show you why King acted the way he did. The sergeant took the rifle from Marty's hand. He started toward the creek, probing the snow with a rifle stock. He had only taken three steps when the rifle hit the trap. The steel jaws snapped shut, biting deep into the wood. Look, you see this? A bear trap. Lacey's had a line of them last night. King could smell it. King knew it was here, and he wanted to stop your daughter from walking into it. He was protecting it. And look how you've paid him back. King. King, old fella. What can I say? Say, don't say anything. Do something. He isn't dead. I'm afraid there isn't much chance. You're a doctor, and you can save him. I'm not a doctor, and I can't save him. You've got to try. I've forgotten. It's... It's been years. You've got to try. Let me see. Yeah, the bullet's close to the heart, eh? I don't know that I can get it out without... It has to be removed? Yes. Then do it. I'll... I'll get my bag. I'll be back in a minute. Don't let him move. King. King boy. King. He... He's such a beautiful dog. He's the best friend I've ever... The best friend I have. My daddy won't let him die. Marty was back in less than five minutes and prepared to go to work. I haven't any anesthetic, but he may not regain consciousness. I hope not until later. But if he does, you must hold him. Don't let him move. I'll just keep my hand on his head. That'll be enough if I can to lie still. Well, here goes. King did regain consciousness. <laughs> but he saw his master, and that was enough for him. Easy, boy. Easy. Don't move, old fellow. The doctor's trying to help you. What? Nothing. I, I swore I'd never touch these instruments again. I know. But if you win here, if you save King, you'll be saving yourself. You have another patient waiting for you, too. And who is it? Lacey. I think it's pneumonia. I'll go to it. Knowing he was the man who set bear traps along here? Yes, if he needs me. You're still a doctor, Marty. This... This is the critical moment right now. Don't let King move. He won't. Will you, boy? King's eyes filled with pain, but filled, too, with trust and love, never left his master's face. And not a muscle moved, not even when the pain mounted in intensity. The sergeant's face became blurred. King felt that he was sinking down, down, down into darkness. He whimpered a little goodbye to the sergeant. There it is. Finished? Nothing left to do but... Dress the wound. Can you tell? No, not yet. As soon as I'm through with this, you can carry him into the house. I'll go and make a bed for him by the stove. Yes, darling. I'll Do use, that. I'll use the best blanket for my very own bed. You've changed your mind about dogs. 
I understand how you feel about King. I, I feel the same way. If we, if we lose him, I, he's unconscious. There's still a chance. All right to lift him now. Yes. Gently, the sergeant lifted King in his arms, and slowly he and Marty walked to the cabin. King was placed on a blanket close to the stove, and Marty left for Lacey's cabin. The sergeant and Anne sat beside King for the next three hours, hardly speaking, afraid to put their hope into words. At last, Marty returned. How about Lacey? George will stay with him. I think he'll pull through. I'm so proud of you, Daddy. You shouldn't be, darling, after what I did to King. Oh, but, but you're going to make him well. And you're going to be a doctor all the time now, aren't you? And you can come back to the United States with me and, and be a doctor there. And if I can make King well, then I will be a doctor again, yes. He'll get well. I know it now. Sergeant. Yes, Anne. Put your hand on his head, like you did before. All right. He loves you so. He'll answer if you call him. I know he will. Say his name. All right. King. King. <gasps> Slowly, King opened his eyes. Weakly, he tried to wag his tail. King. Welcome back, old fella. Yes. He'll make it now. I knew it. I knew it. It's all right, King. It's all right, boy. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Here is the breakfast that wins the praise of so many He-Man Hollywood movie stars. It's Quaker puffed wheat. Or Quaker puffed rice. These ready-to-serve cereals are shot from guns. They're crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with nut-like flavor, too. Pour yourself a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Add milk or cream. Topped with fruit. It's keen. It really hits the spot. And it's good for you. Take a tip. Ask Mom to order both delicious kinds in the big red and blue Quaker packages. That's Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of a perfect crime. When Roy Nealon was murdered in Dawson, I trailed the killers to the entrance of the cave. They were waiting with guns to get me if I went in after them, and I knew that if I didn't get them, they would probably kill young Jackie Nealon, whom they held as hostage. I faced a mighty tough situation. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure... Wednesday. Boys and girls, if your dog could talk, I'll bet he'd ask for kennel ration. You know why? Because kennel ration is one dog food that is made with lean red meat. Choice cuts of U.S. government inspected horse meat. Have mom open a can. Notice the appetizing aroma. You can actually see the chunks of meat. And Mom will be glad to know that kennel ration helps develop a thick, glossy coat that dirt won't cling to. Ask for kennel ration. First in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat. And Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.